For joining me today for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, my special, special, special guest today is one of my favorite singers right now. Not just because she's from the Bay Area like I am, but she has some fantastic music. I'm here talking to Miss Tracy Cruz. Miss Cruz, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Todd? Good. Good. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Not a problem. As you know, we've been communicating for months trying to get this interview in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i'm glad you finally here we were able to work out our different schedules and uh mm -hmm. so welcome thank you so much no problem now you have uh some new music out um your new single is called find a way mm -hmm. and i just love that by the way we're going to talk about that thank you uh but before we get into that for those who don't know tracy cruz tell us about tracy cruz I'm an R&B soul singer, songwriter, recording artist, and vocal coach. I've been performing for over 20 years, and I've been teaching for 15, and I absolutely love it. I'm also a mother of two teenagers, and they keep me very busy. <laughs> okay. Um, now, tell us a little bit about your background. Um, are, I know you're from the Bay Area, mm -hmm. um, but... How did you get into uh, this thing called music? Yeah, so I was actually born in the Philippines. I was born mm -hmm. in Kansas City on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. I moved to San Jose back in the early 80s. And so I've been here for a really long time, really, really long time. I grew up in the Bay Area. I'm still in the Bay Area. But I saw my mother and my grandmother. They were always singing when I was younger. And I just saw how happy they were. And I just saw that as a part of life and a, a way to express yourself and bring you joy wherever you are. And so I just started singing in front of family members and friends and strangers. And um, it was it was awesome. And my grandfathers were very, very supportive. They would always ask me to sing songs and they would pay me <laughs> to sing songs. So that, that was cool. That was like my first couple of gigs <laughs> in front of my grandfathers. But my family, they were very instrumental in my musical upbringing. And I just heard music everywhere, you know, saw my mom, how, how much she loves singing, how my grandma loves singing. Uh, and then my parents, they enrolled me in different music classes, instrumental and vocal. And they also encouraged me to uh, join choirs and bands throughout high school, oh, elementary, middle, high school, college. So I was doing a lot of just different musical activities and I just, I loved it. I loved it so much. And it was always a part of me uh, growing up and I didn't want to do anything else. I mean, I, I did dabble into different things that I really like, like poetry. And also I, I love radio as well. Like I, there was this one point where I, I wanted to be a radio personality at, or like be a promotion, uh, music promotion agent, <laughs> something like that. Just something that was um, heavily involved with uh, music, even even journalism. Like I just, any, any way to express myself, I wanted to do that. But music was always in my heart and it just, it never left. And I just, you know, just wanted to start performing professionally. I started, um, I started that um, during like my high school years. But before that, when I was, um, younger, like in my teen years, I competed a lot, like a lot of singing competitions. And so I was able to learn a lot about, you know, stage presence and all of the vocal elements. And um, during that time of competing, um, I had a vocal coach who was very, very um, important uh, to my growth. Um, he was definitely a great mentor. And I had, and I had a lot of uh, music mentors too, like, you know, as, as I grew older and everyone was very different. I had like a classical vocal coach. I had a, a gospel um, ensemble director. I had, um, I learned musical theater, um, just different styles of music, but I always loved R&B soul because that's what I grew up with. And my mom is a huge fan of really good music. And so I have to give credit to my mom for just raising me to good music. Yay, mom. <laughs> Do you have uh, do you have siblings as well? 
I do have one younger brother. Is he in the music too, or he not loves, like you? He's he's he likes to you know play guitar, and, but and then you know sing at family events or his friend events. But um, he had he didn't pursue uh, music as a career. He actually went into nursing. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, when did you? Because you said you grew up in a house full of music, your mom, mm-hmm. your grandmother, singing for the family, making a little change. Um, <laughs> when did you know you wanted to do this for a living? Because you said you kind of dabbled in or had yeah. interest in other areas. Yeah, I, I, I changed my major a couple of times because I was like, okay, maybe I want to do this and maybe I should align this with music. But it was during my college years where I felt like this is what I really wanted to do because I started teaching vocal lessons. And that was just it. Like, I was like, I want to start teaching. And I, I, I really want to start doing this, you know, um, make a living. Also performing, you know, out outside with my band, like that was a lot of fun. And, and I was, you know, getting paid for what I what I really love to do and being able to combine performances and teaching. I was like, I, I want to do this. This is this is really fun. And, and I'm still doing that. And so is there was just like a moment where I felt like I just, I didn't, you know, I didn't have anything else I wanted to do. I I felt like uh, music was just my, my calling, you know, teaching was my calling songwriting, um, expressing myself through song. It was, was my calling. So that, that was just the moment for me. Like I really wanted to pursue this and, and it's, and it also brings me joy too. You know, it, it does help me pay the bills, but it also brings me joy and it helps me to help other people, you know, through teaching and also uh, connecting with people through lyrics and, and live music. Like that's really powerful. Like I met so many amazing people just through music, whether that's performing at events, whether that's uh, teaching students. I connected with so many people I probably would have never connected with if I didn't do music. So I just, I feel like, you know, music is a, it's just a grand uniter um, and it's a healer. So um, that's definitely, you know, why I I love to do music is is for the connection. And also, you know, music is such a powerful tool and and you have to be very responsible in how you create music and how you release it to the world because there are young ears listening. So you have to be very responsible when you release your music. Okay. I was going to say, um, just listening to you talk, you have the the best of both worlds. I mean, you, you're earning a living doing something you really, really enjoy. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, is it really considered work? Is it, or just, it's just a passion of yours, right? It's a passion, but you know, in, in all honesty, it is a lot of work um, because you have to, as an independent artist, teaching is fun. Like that's my that's my peaceful side <laughs> when it comes to uh, music. The music industry is very, there's a, there's a lot of pressure there. You know, it could be very exhausting. Um, there could be some stress here and there, but overall, you know, it, it's, it's love, you know, you do it because you love it. And so I feel like you just have to find a balance, you know, when you do music um, as a teacher and as a creator, because the creative creative side, the creative part, um, that could be a lot. Like you're definitely exerting a lot of energy um, when it comes to songwriting, recording and performing. That takes a lot, like your whole being. Um, Whereas teaching, it's more about building people and helping people. And so that's like my that's like my joy. That's like my haven. That's why I continue to teach because I just, I love helping other singers and songwriters and musicians um, accomplish their goals because I had a one, like a lot of wonderful mentors and I wanted to be able to be a mentor to those that are um, aspiring artists. So there's a, there's a really good balance between the two. Okay. Let me back up a little bit. Um, You said you changed your mind in college. What college did you go to? I went to San Jose State. San Jose State. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, now let's get more back into the the music aspect of it. Um, mm-hmm. Find find a way. That's your latest. Um, That's my. Huh? Yeah. Um, but you, like you said, you've been a veteran of the music business for what you say? What twenty years? Uh, a long time. Yeah. A long time. Yeah. Um, well, we're gonna get into that a little bit. But first of all, let's get into find a way. Tell us about that single because I love it. 
Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad. I was actually kind of hesitant to release it this year, but I said, you know what? It needs to be re released because of the message. Uh, because we are in a pandemic right now and there's just there's just so much going on, you know, a lot of intense emotions, um, just, you know, there there's so many, you know, very unfortunate and sad situations happening, um, very heartbreaking. And I wanted to create a song and release a song that would uplift people's hearts and just give them some kind of peace um, in just the, you know, the storm of, of things. Uh, so find a way is basically encouraging everyone to just stay patient and, and encourage, uh, be persistent. And, um, you know, because no matter what, you know, we'll always find a way like we could, because we're resilient, like we're, we're still, you know, trying to adapt, trying to get through this pandemic, but, uh, we're still standing and, you know, we're still trying to make moves and inspire people and, uh, make changes. So I really wanted to release um, Find A Way this year because of where we're at. I feel like it's important to release music that is relevant to what everyone's going through, not just yourself, but what ev everybody else is going through. And I feel like it's important to release um, encouraging messages right now. I, I agree. I agree. And um, the information that I got um, find a way is is part of a upcoming album that mm -hmm. you plan to release uh, summer of next year. Hopefully, <laughs> okay. Um, can I tell the title, or do you want to hold yeah, off on no, that? Yeah. Okay, so I understand it's called uh, "Summer After the Rain." Sun after the rain. Sun after the summer after sun, the sun after the rain. Sun after the rain. Okay. Yeah. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. VGRC WQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Hey, I'm Kenny Lattimore, and you're checking out the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with my brother Todd Woodson. Now, back to our conversation. That kind of ties into what you're talking about of just, mm -hmm. you know, pushing through and getting over, you know, all the stuff that we've gone through the last year and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about that upcoming, or is it? too soon yet or um you know just just like a just a summary of it is is just overcoming storms in our lives especially with this whole pandemic i really wanted to create an album that was very upbeat mid-tempo no ballads this time um oh. i've always released ballads in my albums like a lot of ballads uh and i wanted to for people to just listen to it and feel good even just for a few minutes you know it's it's supposed to be a, uh, an album about victory and overcoming struggles and challenges and coming out stronger and wiser. Um, that's why it's called Sun After the Rain, R-E-I-G-N, uh, because when we conquer ourselves and conquer our fears, then we're able to be our best, best selves for ourselves and for other people. So um, it's supposed to be a victorious album. Okay. Coming out of the storm, coming out of the darkness, coming out of uh, pain, um, anything that we've experienced, you know, trials and tribu tribulations. Okay. Let me ask you a question, too, because it kind of leads into a, a question I had down the line, but I guess mm -hmm. I'll ask it now. Um, you said there's no balance on this upcoming upcoming album, um, and I get it. Um, how would you, um, I don't want this to sound biased, but how do you... Um, uh, okay. When I hear your music, I definitely hear the Bay Area flavor. Like if I hadn't, if I hadn't listened to your music and I didn't know anything about you, I would say she's from the Bay Area because your music <laughs> sounds like that <laughs> Bay Area sound. <laughs> How would you uh, describe your music? Yeah, it definitely has a lot of sunshine. Like I, I feel like you know, my, my music definitely represents where I'm at, you know, definitely 
has the island feel because I'm from the Philippines. It definitely has the Bay Area feel. Um, you know, uh, it's very vibrant. And um, I feel like you create from your environment, you know, so it's, it's really important that you showcase that in the music. And uh, I like to blend a lot of different styles like R&B, soul, jazz and hip hop. Um, and you'll definitely be hearing that in this project because it's more of the, <laughs> and, and there's a lot of nice bass lines, a lot of drums. And it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun project. You know, I'm, I'm definitely narrowing down some songs. Um, of course, like I said, there'll be some mid-tempo songs. It won't be like fast throughout, but I wanted to give it a feel good, feel good vibe for everyone. So that when you listen to the music, then, you know, you just, you have more of a, you know, a brighter perspective, you know, for your day or for your week. It's just something to just really uplift you. Okay. That's really what the project is about, is to be a, just a message of, of hope, love, peace, joy, um, and gratitude. Okay. Do you, um, with the release, anticipate it maybe summer of next year, do you anticipate going on the road and touring to support this new album or <laughs> it depends um i i do i would love to do that um, but it all depends um i do have it slated for next year but it might take it it might take longer than that mm -hmm. you know i might end up you know uh, releasing it at the end of 2022 it might be 2023 uh because i like to really take my time when it comes to creating albums and creating eps um singles are a little bit different because it's just one song but i i just i really like to take my time and before i release a song or a project i want to make sure my heart and my mind is clear okay so, wow are you teasing us, Tracy? You're telling us maybe summer, maybe fall, maybe 2023. <laughs> uh, but, but I get it. Um, <laughs> now, you've been in the business a long time. I went back and I actually listened to a lot of your, your previous stuff. And uh, yeah, you have some great stuff. I really Thank like you. Let's Go Back and Thank Happy. You. Oh, cool. Um, so you've been in the business 20 years. How have you... How have you seen the business or has the business changed since the time you you got involved? It has. I, I, I feel like music is very accessible now, nowadays as far as creation. Um, everyone can go to um, a music equipment store and buy recording equipment and record in their room if they'd like. And social media also allows a lot of people to promote their music and you know different distributors like cd baby and all of that um you're able to release your music digitally in a lot of platforms so you can be a full full-on independent artist so i feel like accessibility has changed um social media has allowed independent artists to be out there and be able to connect with anyone in the world and it's very very powerful you know to be able to access that um and to be able to uh, be seen and heard in so many so many different ways and now you know now we're doing like virtual uh virtual conferences virtual meetups interviews uh and concerts everything it's there's so many different ways where you can promote yourself and build your brand so i i feel like that has changed a lot Okay. Um, now I read your uh, your bio. I didn't realize that you are a uh, a voting member of the Recording Academy, um, mm -hmm. the Grammys. Um, how long have you been involved with the Grammys? This is just my second year. Second I year. only became a member last year. Okay. And it's been it's been really fun. I've met so many talented individuals and groups um, through the Recording Academy and you know, been able to attend some of the virtual meetups. And it's just so great being able to understand the process of how everyone, you know, how people get nominated and how people vote is really fascinating. And knowing that process, like, oh, wow, I, I never knew that, you know, growing up, I, I've always watched the Grammys, but I didn't know what went on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So um, just having all this information, it just, it makes it really, really exciting. You know, it's always been fascinating, but now it's even 
like even a hundred times more exciting because you're a part of it. Right. So yeah, it's, it's been a great, it's, it's definitely been a great journey. Okay. And um, let me just ask if you were nominated for a Grammy, this might sound trivial or whatever. Could you vote for yourself? You can vote for yourself. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You can vote for yourself. If okay. you're I didn't know if you had to exclude yourself because. Um... No, you, you can vote for yourself. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, now, some of the people that you've, um, you perform with, I was reading uh, Kenny Lattimore, who we just interviewed a couple of weeks ago, uh, Pete Escobillo, Cabido, Pete Escobedo, excuse me, uh, Mickey Howard, Raheem Devine. What are those experiences like? It was so amazing, you know, being able to open up for such great artists and bands. Um, I was I was taking notes, you know, as they perform. Uh, I was just I would watch how they engage with the crowd, you know, how they talk to the crowd, um, what they do in the beginning, in the middle, in the end. Like I was I was taking notes. Like they're they're amazing, you know, and and you can tell. Um, how just brilliant their shows are because um, they put in so much love and so much energy and effort into their shows and just um, building up, you know, their craft, their talent. And, and so just watching that, uh, you know, it's, it's so amazing. And I am still inspired um, whenever I see uh, a wonderful artist or, you know, one of wonderful group um, take the stage and they just, they're so comfortable. It's like they're, they're home and you're, you're, welcome into their home. Okay. Let me ask you, um, uh, like I said, I, I love your music. You're one of my favorite artists right now. Oh, thank you. Um, what do you hope people get out of your music, Tracy? I, I want people to know that it's honest and it's heartfelt and it comes from personal experiences. Uh, that's why it takes me a while to release music. I, I don't like to rush music. I don't like to rush creativity. I don't like to rush art you have to create and release with intention because remember you have a responsibility. Uh, okay. And so, and so I feel like I just want people to know that, you know, it's, it's coming from my heart and I hope it, it moves your heart as well. Okay. Now let's go back a little bit. You said that you're also a, a teacher. Um, mm-hmm. You yes. teach. Um, what kind of advice would you give, you know, some of your students who may want to, pursue that same path that or go down that same path that you've gone how what kind of advice would you would you instill on them yeah definitely um study your craft um really really build really study um practice that's really important because you want to know your instrument through and through and you want to be able to fully utilize it to your highest highest potential um build your community you know definitely support other people in your in your community you know musicians singers songwriters producers creatives in general, always build a community. Um, And also, you know, reciprocate love and support. Um, You know, it's not all about you. It's not all about, it's not all about promoting yourself. It's good to promote others too. Um, Especially if you love their music or you, you love what they're doing, Um, you know, shout, shout them out. Um, And also uh, just don't, don't get discouraged, you know, just even baby steps, you know, matter. Sometimes it might take longer uh, to achieve your goals, but you have to take those baby steps and don't compare your success or your path with somebody else, because what is for you is for you. What is not for you is not for you. And everybody has a different path, you know, and in music and life. Uh, and, and so just be thankful for the opportunities, but remember that, you know, you define your own success and somebody else, somebody else's opportunities may just be for them, and yours may come in a different package. So just be just be present. Okay. Be present. Be, be aware of you know just the opportunities that come your way. Okay, uh, great advice. Um, now we're just coming to the end of uh, 2021. You have any uh, any shows between now and the end of the year? Coming up? Uh, well, I, I did about almost 20 shows this year since mm. May. So I, it was a really busy season. I might take a couple of uh, months off because <laughs> I really okay. need to finish the project. Okay. I, I feel I feel refreshed when I have a lot of new music to present. Um, I was supposed to have a big show in March at this um, 
really popular venue, but there there has been delays in my pro, uh, products uh, for production in, in my album. So I wanted to just postpone it for a little bit because I don't want to do the show if I don't have an album out. Okay, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. Um, Tracy, tell people where they can reach out to you on uh, on social media or online. Sure. Um, you can find me at tracycruzmusic.com, T-R-A-C-Y-C-R-U-C music.com. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter under Tracy Cruz Music. Um, also just, you know, uh, Apple Music, Spotify, Bandcamp, and the works. Okay. Find a way. <laughs> um, so when when was that released? I said it's your latest single, but yeah, when, did, when did that come out? Yeah, the, um, that came out August 27th. August, okay. And how's and that been received by your fans and the uh, general public? It's actually been received very well. Um, I've gotten a lot of messages saying, you know, wow, like I, whenever I'm going through some tough times, I listen to the song and it just really, you know, brings me in a better mood, um, you know, gives me a better perspective, um, encourages me to get up and... Uh, that that was that was really really nice, you know, being able to receive those types of messages. That's the reason why I released that song, is so that you know when people are going through tough times or just having a bad day, they can listen to that and um, be motivated and be be inspired. You know that you know there's always there's always a way. You know through through the t- through the tough times, um, just you know. Just be patient and, and and be and be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with yourself and um, yeah, stay encouraged. Stay on your path. Okay. okay. So um, Tracy, one more question. Um, what's your uh, what's your writing process? Because you said you don't want to release an album until it's like ready. And mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. how do you how do you go about? writing or how much do you write during a day or is it varied or you just have to be in the mood how does that work yeah so it it varies um sometimes i'll write from scratch like i'll write a melody i'll write lyrics and then the song structure and then i'll get with one of my musicians and we arrange it and send it off to a producer or my band plays it um but now nowadays um my producer he's been sending me tracks and so i would just listen to it over and over and over and over again and then i'll start coming up with like different emotions like okay how does the song make me feel what kind of visuals am i you know what am i what kind of visuals am i seeing well tracy i appreciate you uh joining the show today i'm really glad we had a chance to talk and finally after months of communicating we were able to get this in I'm going to give you the last word. So uh, have at it. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you so much for having me on your show. You know, this was a lot of fun. And uh, to everyone out there, you know, stay safe, uh, stay encouraged and, you know, be compassionate towards everybody because, you know, we're all going through a lot and we just we don't know. We don't know, you know, what goes on um, behind that smile or, you know, behind the scenes. So, you know. Be compassionate towards everybody and um, just continue to, you know, fulfill your purpose and, you know, stay on track. And and also, you know, much love to everyone that has been supporting me throughout the years. I really appreciate it. Okay. And you can find out more about Tracy on our social media sites. We'll have in the show notes and also on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Miss Tracy Cruz, I really appreciate you to uh, coming through so today. Much. Thank you. And uh, good luck with everything. And hopefully 2022 brings you everything that uh, that you want. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Tracy. That's Tracy Cruz on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Tracy Cruz. You can find out more about Tracy on her website at tracycruzmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. 
You can do your part to support this channel by buying us a coffee at That Soul Guy. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.